Arturo, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy schedule. Film production has been dramatically impacted by COVID over the past year. What were some of those obstacles that you had when you were returning to filming? Well, the, the first thing is, can we go back? There are things outside our control, for example, government restrictions in quarantine and so forth. Mm -hmm. Once we address those, is then designing and planning how to build a safe environment for the cast and crew. And that entailed working with labor relations, unions, physical production executives, HR, uh, a number of people uh, were involved in coming up with designing and coming up with policies and protocols to follow. The main obstacle, as we all know, is social distancing, right? How do we do make a film while maintaining social distancing? There were pods that were created for production. Zone A was basically who's on set with a cast and crew. Zone B was people that needed to be on the set, but don't need to be in close proximity with the cast and crew. You see uh, people in the production office, and zone D, people off premises that are part of the production. Second thing was testing. Back then, PPE equipment was in scarcity, tests were in scarcity, labs were in scarcity. So once we got over that obstacle, then is testing people during production and what do we do if we get positive results? Once somebody tested positive, quarantine them, and then do contact tracing to see who else would be at risk and putting other people at risk. But this, this had to have been a logistical nightmare. How's it all going? You know, it's going better than when we started, but it's still very challenging. So for example, in Jurassic, we had to shut down the picture and that was a priority for us was how can we quickly come back to filming? Some challenges that we had there, uh, at one point there were some people that tested positive. So we actually had to shut down, uh, follow up, have follow up tests. The tests came back negative the second time around. So then we were able to get back into production again. But also transportation where you would fill, let's say a van with 10 people, now they're going to be four. So that means that you need more vans, more drivers, to get everybody to set on time. So there's still a lot of restrictions around it and together with that, a lot of costs so that we need to take also into consideration. Do you see any opportunities, any learnings, things that are coming out of this, this pandemic? I would say um, digital initiatives have been accelerated and the current environment really doesn't give a choice and they're required to opt in. Second is the work from home. Working from home, in the, I think is, in the past was perceived as, if you work from home, you are not as productive. You didn't have that face time with your boss and that it was gonna be perceived, you know, wrong. Uh, I think that that has changed completely because we've seen how working from home has been as productive as working in the office. The productivity is still there. It has not been impacted. We, we, we're ramping up. We're still making movies and moving on. Have your views on crisis management changed in the last year? No and yes. No, because safety for us has always been part of the job. We film all over the world and our standards of safety we bring with us anywhere we go, right? But then... This crisis has made everybody aware that following protocols and policies saves lives. And safety is, I don't think, seen anymore as just another department, but an integral department that allows us to move you know, forward. So in that sense, that, um, I think that that has changed you know, crisis management and the view on, on, on crisis management. So Arturo, how will business change going forward at Universal? In terms of change, we also have to address Black Lives Matter. We're now taking uh, real action in really looking at ourselves in the mirror. 
and uh, through through sessions that we have and workshops of recognizing what implicit bias we all have and how do we see each other and I think that in the old days it was expected to hey leave your baggage at home don't bring your personal stuff to work and what we're learning is that when you bring some of that to work and you share who you are and the challenges that you have it bonds people and it bonds them and creates the team become stronger so as you accept and learn about other people it just makes in our view a stronger more collaborative and, and united workforce so i think that's something that definitely is i see already changing so we've talked a lot about making movies and we would be very remiss if we didn't talk about distribution. What do you think about the future of the, the theatrical exhibition? I think that people still want to go to the theater. There is something about going to the movies, uh, the, the marketing involved in releasing a film creates an excitement, uh, creates a, an anticipation. There's an energy around it before you go. Where you may see changes, I think, is we may see less number of theaters and also what type of movies make it to the big screen. And consumers obviously really want the optionality. And I, you know, if you look back in some of the moves that you've made with, with Trolls to accelerating that window and um, seeing great results. So it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's immediate cannibalization of the theatrical exhibition. Absolutely. We've been preparing for this for a while. Let me give you an example. For Trolls, um, we had built a tool internally to actually track all the workflows in post-production and distribution so that if you actually change, let's say, the color timing of date of a film is pushed, all of a sudden, you know, it, it gives you where, they, where you're going to have a problem downstream. When we distribute a film, you're not only releasing one version of the film. Depending on which film, you can have up to 400 versions of that film. Remember, if you distribute worldwide, you can have different languages. Is it going to be subtitled? Is it going to be dubbed? You have censorship committees in different countries to look at the, at the films before they're allowed into the country. So in all the ugliness and things that have occurred this past year, it, there's still a lot of bright spots. And my takeaway is, is that we actually have, have evolved and moved forward and, and, and transformed and um, kind of shifting into the next phase of, of what is the future. Absolutely. Still find a way to enjoy films. <laughs> yes. Arturo, thank you so much for joining me, albeit remotely. It was really great discussing these things with you and reflecting on the last year. Thank you for having me, Todd. I truly really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity.